Good evening. Welcome to Frank Bruno versus Joe Bugner. Well, the experts have found it difficult to accord this contest total credibility, but the British public have been exercising their imagination about it for a very long time. That is why nearly 35,000 fight fans have actually paid nearly £2 million to swell the attendance here. So, White Hart Lane awaits this much-publicised Anglo-Australian confrontation. Reg Guttridge and Jim Watt are at ringside. Joe Bugner is in the ring, and we're now waiting for Frank Bruno. So very much the hero of the night, Frank Bruno, with the crowd anyway, wearing his pink caps in the stands. And that uh, heralds him in as the original Jack Solomon's fanfare, right back to the 1940s when they had uh, Bruce Woodcock and Jack London and Freddie Mills and Len Harvey. But they boxed in the afternoon here on the Tottenham Hotspur football ground. And uh, so saw those fights, and if they live up to those, we'll be quite satisfied. There was a, a minor one once between Terry Venables and Fred Callaghan, but that was on the pitch. So there you are, very much the betting favourite. Uh, official bookmakers in the stands now have gone three to one on Bruno, five to two against Budna. And there he is now, trying to upstage. Uh, well, I would think the wrestling world, but uh, he wore this when he fought Greg Page in his last fight, Budna. Scheduled then for 12 rounds and the Australian flag obviously now that he's an Australian citizen a Hungarian born partner who came all the way from Jogget to St Ives America and now Will Australia be standing for the national anthem? so it's a, a very cold night indeed down to 42 degrees as we await the anthem setting indeed here on the Spurs ground and uh, a real good debut and a big time for Barry Hearn's introduction to boxing promotions with his associates Terry Lawless and Mickey Duff and they've had to wrap these fighters up as you would expect because uh, it really has dropped down to 42 degrees and there's a, a few sharp characters around here who would with a nip in the air like that they'd be capable of drinking it Uh, gentlemen, please, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, 
Mickey Dove, Barry Hearn and Terry Lawless present the main event of the evening, a 12 rounds heavyweight contest, a three minutes each round, an eliminator for the heavyweight championship of the world, sponsored by Makita Power Tools. Between and in addition to you, the former heavyweight champion of Great Britain, the Commonwealth and Europe, Joe Bugner. And in this corner, the former heavyweight champion of Europe, Frank Bruno. The weighing at one o'clock today, Booker scaled 18 stone, four and a half pounds. Bruno scaled 16 stone, six pounds. The officials for this contest appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control, your referee, Mr. John Cole of Wolverhampton, your timekeeper, Tom Powell, and your steward in charge, Mr. Bob Graham. Thank you. So the tail of the tape, I think, says it all. 26 and a half pounds difference there. Heaviest ever for Joe Bugner. And a lot of it probably shows in that waist measurement, doesn't it? 40 against 33 for Bruno. But he's, uh, at least Bruno's got bigger fist at 14 against 11. So the talking's done now. And certainly Bugner's put on a good talking act. And Bruno here just shown a bit more needle than I've ever seen him before. And I've followed now Butler for 20 years. Is he going to try and come out and do, as he did with Richard Dunn, a one-round stoppage? Well, the old pacifist Butler's not there anymore. They've... Uh, They've geared him up and he's coming in with his head a bit dangerously too, Jim, isn't he's he? He's very dangerous with his head. I think Bugner's plan here there just to try to intimidate Bruno. Every bit of strain and pressure in this fight tonight is on Bruno's shoulders. And I think Bugner, being experienced, is going to try to exploit that a bit. He's going to try to put him under pressure. He won't keep this pace going. Bruno just wants to be nice and careful in the first round. Slam some jabs into that big face of Bugner's and just take his time. Don't take any chances, but Bugner's trying the old man trick at the moment. Kidology can go a long way in boxing, but in the end, you still got to take the whack on the chin. But all the criticism aimed at Buckner over there, that's the one thing he's always had is a, is a stout chin. And some good solid stuff coming in from Bruno. Now, remember, he fought extremely well in the World Championship bit against Tim Witherspoon in the early part of the fight. And Witherspoon, uh, with respect to Buckner, really is a class above Joe. Bugner, of course, known for that uh, gift of the left jab, but Bruno actually hits very powerfully with a pole of a left-hand punch. And I checked that with his opponents. They said it really does shatter you with the first few left-hand jabs he catches you with. See, just the old flurry in Bugner, just the same, isn't it, Jim? He's not levering into those, not turning his body into those punches. Yeah, those are not really faithless punches. Those are not little... Uh swinging arm punches, but with 18 stone behind him, okay, you don't want to take too many of them. But uh, I think the first couple of times Bruno lands this big jab of his, uh, we'll see Joe thinking about a little bit of defence again. But he's doing the right thing, he's trying to intimidate Bruno, but thankfully it hasn't worked, the Bruno's looking nice and calm. Well, they've got to warm up here, it's uh, the nippiest night uh, I've covered in uh, outdoor boxing, obviously. And the way it's going, even if they paid £100 for the ringside here and the cheers from the stands there, they wouldn't mind uh, if Bruno knocked this fellow over in the first round. They're certainly giving him enough encouragement. So the countdown for the end of the first anyway. And the steam is already showing now. And they've got to work up a full head of steam, I would have thought. Oh, 
to the belt. A little bit of needle going in, as we thought. John Cole from Wolverhampton did well to get in there. And there's the crowded corner of the Lawless camp, involved in the black, as we used to, with Lawless in the middle. George Francis on the outside and Frank Black, the old firm. They've worked for, with Bruno more or less from the start, although Francis came in a bit later. So, Jim, this was the start of the, the fight, looking in replay now. Now, he yeah, rushes well, in with the head. Pugner came out to try and intimidate. Look at the head now, here now. Thankfully, he didn't uh, keep on doing that as the round went on, but he tried to intimidate Bruno. It didn't work. I think the most significant thing in the first round was that Pugner's jabs were falling short and Bruno's wearing it. a little bit tight before fights Bruno but he says he hasn't done too much for this one he's felt great second round then now we don't want to see Bugger as I say so big he says don't worry too much about the weight I'm a big lad and at 37 he doesn't want to dry out too much to try and prove anything he weighed 17 stone 10 for his last fight with Paige so he's, uh, he's added quite a bit there really Uh, three wins in Australia against, well, X-rated, but really retreaded Amer Australians, uh, Americans, I should say, in Australia. Let's put him back in the picture, and um, some ratings, he's actually got a, a rating 10, one above Bug uh, Bruno. I think it might be easier to call them Joe and Frank, uh, Jim, <laughs> do get a bit mixed up with Bruno and Bugner with the excitement atmosphere that we've claimed around here this great tingle of anticipation as we are close to the ring like this Bugner is trying to put Bruno look there's the head again this is terrible this is all the old man tricks coming out he's trying everything he can to intimidate Bruno but Frank's not having it nice and calm he looked over at his corner there and nodded well I hope this goes either to a clean cut knockout or good points we, we don't want two falls in a submission thank you I think the main thing is, Reg, we're seeing plenty of action. Joe has come out to, to do battle, thankfully. I don't know how long he'll keep this pace going. But uh, I'm impressed by the way Bruno has coped with this. Bugner has tried to put him under pressure, but he's, he, his face is just looking deadpan. And he has that couple of inches on the jab that Bugner hasn't found yet. They turn that punch right above the commentary position there. He looked like he was going to left jab it, and then he just switched the hook, and that was a good shot on Bugner's chin. Bugner stopped in his first professional fight, but it took them 15 years before anybody else could catch up with him to stop him, but that was only Shavers, who was a tremendous banger. Bruno is winning the battle of the jabs at the moment. I had a feeling that the jabs were going to be the most important punches in this fight. See, Bruno's jab is getting home. Bugner is not getting out of the way of these jabs. He's going to be in trouble if he can't find a way to avoid these jabs. He said that in the in the first round, didn't he? That uh, you've got to respect that jab. And well, by careless, this one. Bruno there, he can't afford that. Got to keep those hands up. Goes the the clever old fox. Well, he came in with 494 professional rounds. Bugna. twice with Ali, of course, and the great Joe Frazier. This is excellent boxing from Bruno. This is the best I have seen Bruno. Bruno looking very professional at this moment. He's keeping Bugner under pressure without exerting too much energy himself. And this is what you have to do when you're in with an old fox. So I wonder what the words of wisdom going over there. Jeff Fennick, the super bantamweight champion on the outside, a very good fighter indeed. And Johnny Lewis, his new trainer there in the red jacket. Now then, we can look at some uh, Bruno action coming here in the replays there when he falls back on the ropes there, Bugner. And he clever the way he smothers his way out of it. He needed to, that's where the experience, he used the ropes to his advantage there and then claimed well. And that's... Uh, Jeff Fennick whispering in the ear there of uh, Bugner. Very pally in the gymnasium. Unusual for a bantamweight to be giving the big heavyweight some advice, isn't it, Jim? Yeah, well, the, the little bantamweight has done it all. He's won a world title, so he's worth listening to. 
But uh, a long way to go, but this is certainly a good start uh, from Bruno. Bugner has tried to t intimidate him and it hasn't worked. And we're into round three then. Started off a better fight than I'd anticipated. I thought they might be kind of looking at each other for a while, but uh, knowing how Bruno was so intent to just uh, well, unload a bit of nurture and hate, I suggest, with all the words that have been coming his way. In fairness to Bugner, a lot of it's been play acting. Well, it's generated a lot of money one way with uh, television in, in Australia scoring cable in America and of course with ITV and then a hundred pound ringside and it's a, a big gate take but they're putting up a good good enough show the big fellas the fight the public wanted and at least the tabloid press convinced them that they wanted it anyway well we're getting the excitement with Craig Burridge Bruno is boxing very well, he's got Bugner under pressure now all the time, but steady pressure, he's not getting rattled, he's just keeping steady pressure on Bugner. And uh, Bugner's jabs are still falling short. See, the thing with the Americans that he fought in Australia, they weren't really putting all that youthful pressure on him, they just went there to earn some money and not get uh, involved too much and we covered those fights well the difference was Reg those were fighters slightly over the hill but Bruno is enough, still considering himself an up and coming fighter a contender he wants badly to win this fight Bugner's recent opponents have had their shot and maybe just looking for a, a couple of quick here and there he's 26 Bruno seems as though he's been around longer than that Handling that rather well, then. Oh, it's a good swipe there by Bruno. That right hand punch, just natural strength he's got, Bruno. He doesn't have to really turn into it as we get the countdown for the end of the third, and Bugner's. Uh, Larks in the opening round look as though they're over and as Jim once said he's, he's starting the defensive stuff now and understandably so as well and that he's good at this remember but he's a known survivor see Bruno is punching as he moves in here uh, he's not allowing Bugner to clinch all the time Morning, sir. Can I help you? Hello. I'd like to test drive one of the new Vauxhalls, please. How about one of our new two-litre Cavaliers? The SRI 130. Adjustable steering, fuel injected, capable of 120 miles per hour. could try one of our new Astras, the 2-litre GTE, boasting some 122 brake horsepower. <laughs> Finally, the sporting flagship of our range, the Carlton GSI 3000, car of the year 1987, power steering, ABS, electric windows, well, sir? Hmm. An excellent choice, sir. Happy motoring. <laughs> TSB Speedlink. Your balance is 304. And you can find out your bank balance without even leaving the office. Rest 
recall, who's uh, 49 and uh, has been handling some world title fights recently. Into the fourth round, then. And Bruno, to forgive the boxing call, it's uh, just showing he's becoming the governor at the moment. But old Joel will get in there and do his thing. This, this is what he does. I mean, when you can confuse even the great Muhammad Ali got fed up with trying to deal with him in the Kuala Lumpur in the, in the heat so Joe's had it to 100 plus degrees and now down to 40 odd here a couple of steaming bulls in there now aren't they Jim yeah we'll have to remember it's the end of October here it is very cold but uh, thankfully it's a hot case we're getting. So as you say, Jim, Bruno now has got the right pattern, trying to keep himself under control all the time. Doesn't want to burn himself out, he's obviously getting a bit of criticism about perhaps a lack of stamina but he's only had that against fighters that would come at him of quality yeah well uh, we don't normally see a, a, a lack of stamina obviously until the later stages in the contest but he's doing the right thing here he's keeping pressure on Bugner Bugner was still breathing pretty heavy at the start of this round so he's not he doesn't have the recovery powers obviously that Bruno has so Bruno's doing the right thing keep him under pressure keep him moving keep him working but don't do anything careless or silly I thought Bruno might get himself a little bit in, involved with the wrestling gym, but he's been smart enough to keep out of most of well, hasn't he? So far, I know it's pretty early days yet, but this is the most professional I've seen Bruno. He's not allowing Bugner. We know what Bugner likes to do best, but Bruno is not allowing that. He's taken, when Joe Bulls forward, Frank's taking a little step back and getting his own jab working. Little tap on the break there. Is it? It's just as well Bugner didn't go down from that, really, because the referee was just between them. Bruno, right above our commentary position, we can hear those and almost feel them sinking in, do eh? Well, Joe is not allowing the fight to go his way. Frank is dictating the action at the moment and uh, really looking good. So many of the stars around the ringside now. There's Bruce Willis of Moonlighting fame who fancied Bugner to win, I'm told. He must be sweating a bit now. Well, we've had uh, the well-known Angie, Sammy Fox. We've had them all in here tonight. <laughs> One or two great fighters as well, like Alan Minter, the world champion. And uh, my co-commentator, Jim Watts, taken a bow as well. To work there off the stall. Now this was as Bruno really, Jim, fought to, more or less against Tim Witherspoon, and then he did run out of steam. But I mean, Witherspoon put different kind of power and pressure on him that I think uh, Bugner's capable of, surely. Well, also, we have to look for the Witherspoon fight to help Bruno here. A little bit of carelessness from Frank there. He dropped his hands and left his chin up in the air, but uh, Joe didn't have the power there to make him pay for it. We know Frank's technique still. He's a little bit, uh, there's, there's Big Joe complaining, that's a good sign for Bruno. Yeah, just uh, take a couple of little rabbit blows around the neck there, and uh, the referee just waving to Bruno's corner, keep quiet. But as you say, when they moan a bit, then they're just getting shown a few distress signals in the fight game.
Well, we've read and we've been trying to convince him that uh, Bogdan has never really had the heart for the game. Well, all I can say is he's taken his fairest stick in there at the moment. And you've got to be fairly gutsy. It's 37 and 18 and a half stone to do that. Yeah, well, when we say he's never had the heart for the game, but we don't actually mean his courage because he was always brave. I mean, he never quit and he went in with the best. But I never feel his heart was in the game. I never felt he wanted really to be a fighter. But uh, we never, we never uh, thought he lacked courage at all. That's been shown tonight. I remember him at the Bedford Boys Club when he was a school's discus thrower. And he represented young England in the amateurs. That's uh, coming up 20 years now for his first professional fight. And he's the most experienced heavyweight in the world by far at the moment. Bruno seems to be boxing to a plan. He wasn't putting too much power into his punches in the early rounds. But now that he's getting into range and finding a way through, he's putting more power into them when he sees the chance. I think he really is trying to think this one out. It's not very convincing, the inside work here. And, uh, we, well, may, we, we made no reference, actually, Jim, to the head man of the game, Mike Tyson, and I don't intend to do so because this, this has no real bearing on whether they're good enough to fight Mike Tyson. Tyson's manager is here to, ha to have a look. He's working for radio. The main thing in the fight at the moment, Bruno is managing to keep it at long range, which is not allowing Bruno to clinch. He's getting in now just as I'm speaking, but for the greater part of the action, Bruno has taken that little half step back when Joe pulls forward and pinning him on the jab. Bruno's corner then has just nobbled the referee that they think he's allowing Bugner to hold on a bit too much. He's spoiled, but that's always been Bugner's game. looks almost like a barber shop without our overhead camera shot that Jim is uh, attending now. Now this is a little bit of history now for Bugner really because he's coming out for his 500th professional round. Not a lot of people know that Jim. So have a quick look now at this replay. See Frank's taking that little step back which is not allowing Joe to pull in. Okay the rope stopped him going back any further but Frank's tactics are sound tonight and he really is boxing as well as I've seen him box. Round six, and there it is, 500 professional rounds, and still going strong, Joe Bugner, giving some praise for that. And he really fought 14 men who have fought for world titles, so he's, he hasn't hung around with too many of the low, the low ones, only in his early part of his career. But the last six have been on points, and the last one in London was in the ninth round against Danny Sutton back in 83. Still is not finding the range with the jab, and Bruno is. There weren't too many people who thought that Bruno would actually outbox Bugner, Jim, but I, I always had the feeling he, he was capable of doing that, and he's definitely the stronger puncher. Yep, and he really fancies the job now. As I said, Bugner has tried all the old tricks, the intimidation, rubbing the head in, trying to bull him. Nothing has worked. Look at Frank's face. It's still as impassive as it was before the fight started. So Joe's going to have to come up with something else. I don't know what it's going to be. Just blooded around the nose, Bugner. Not surprisingly, with that uh, pole of a left hand piston punch coming in. Roughing it up there a bit to Bugner with Bugner's own corner there. I imagine uh, his more or less manager and his, his wife Marley now is just wondering now what sort of advice the corner will be giving him because she certainly has motivated him on the comeback. No question about that. Super spouse, I think, is a fair title for her. Is there any 
Terry Laws is banging on the canvas there. He's quite angry that the referee, he thinks, is allowing uh, Bugner to hold on a bit too much. Cracking jab again, Regs. That was a really thumping jab from Bruno there. And Joe has not found an answer to that punch. And that is actually the reason he can't get close enough to, to spoil, to use his spoiling tactics. That jab has dictated the fight all the way through. It breaks up Bugner's concentration, doesn't it, as we get the last half minute in the six. See, none of Bugner's previous opponents have had a jab like Bruno's. A tremendous straight, big ram rod, powerful jab. Bugner just can't get past it. He's still, as we can see, trying like a devil, but uh, he doesn't quite know how to get past it. Remember, sole referee's decision, no judges on this one, that's only for the World Championship fights and European Championship fights here. And it really is 200, what is it now, let's see, 486 pounds, I'll make that there in that ring, that's, that's some beef trust brigade, isn't it? 230 Bruno, 256 Bogner. He might be lugging that around now as the fight goes on a bit more. Right? No, you, you sometimes get stricken with a bit of athletic senility when you get too big in this game. And uh, the old age is creeping up. You, I mean, 30 normally is a great divide, isn't it, for heavyweights? And 37, he's doing well to hang in there with a strong fellow like this. Then. You know, half and when you, he's at his heaviest ever, over 18 stones, so he certainly isn't built for speed. He can't match Bruno for power, so what does he have left? Just the, the old tricks of the trade. But uh, he's never been able to get the initiative in the contest. Bruno has always had that. The only nagging doubt we have is over Bruno's uh, stamina problem. But I don't think we'll see that tonight because he's not under pressure. He is the man exerting all the pressure. I don't think he's going to have a problem at all with his stamina tonight. Bugner flipping that uh, postman's not punch out the double left hand, but not causing any real distress at all. And he just can't keep him going enough as he did in his younger day. been prancing around in the fight bug nerve Jim but he's he looks to me as though he's anchoring a bit now it's just slowing down a bit isn't he yeah well it has to be expected he has been the man under pressure at all times I say it again I've never seen Bruno looking quite so professional if he keeps it at this level then we can really say we have a world-class heavyweight in this country well he's taken his uh, share of stick uh, Bruno, well, not so much in the ring, but uh, certainly in the printed words. So maybe uh, if he can pull this one off, then, well, he can be the big hero yet again. WBA have already got him up, rated number two, which is a little bit embarrassing. I think he's uh, just a bit lower than that. So let's have a look at some replay now, Joe. Well, we're getting used to seeing this now, uh, Bruno being the man pushing Bugner back. And as soon as he gets up close, uh, what, what can Bugner do? Mess him about a bit, just try to find some safety in close. And from another angle, 
as you say, that see, that's when he gets the arms and forearms in to try and protect himself. That's why he's lasted so long, uh, Joe Bugger. And Bruno's not quite sure what he should be doing there. He'd maybe be bringing the punches up, he'd be better off. round then of a scheduled 12 with no championship at stake and really no official eliminator tag but it's always been my contention that every contest is an eliminator because the loser's eliminated Bruno's con content with the same pattern, isn't he? I think it's been drummed into Big Frank tonight that uh, Bruckner is a great survivor and uh, he must pace himself because he must have plenty left in the last third of the contest because everything Frank has done tonight has been carefully controlled, it's been thought out, he hasn't done anything wild when he's been put under any pressure, he's used a little bit of safety first, he's grabbed the hold and it's been a good performance all the way around, well thought out. The only time Frank Bruno has been the distance is a 10-rounder against the American Phil Brown. And that's in a winning fight, of course. Then he losses Bone Crusher Smith and Tim Witherspoon. Well, it was an act night for Bugler to try and turn the clock back, Jim, as we've all got to turn them back later tonight. But it's not quite working for him, I don't think. Well, he's still in there, Reggie. He's not winning anything at the moment, but we still have to remember the question mark about how the last couple of rounds are going to go. He's never been in any serious trouble, you'll notice. Frank's never had him on the verge of any knockdowns or anything. It's been a good, steady, thumping, jab performance from Frank, but Bugner has never been in trouble, so still a lot of action in there. No man yet, I would think. Well, he certainly hasn't uh, come to take the money and run, that's for sure. He's taken his... shipped a bit of punishment along the way there. <laughs> Not too many people have bloody Joe Bugner's nose over the years, Jim, but that, uh, presumably the left-hand jab has done that. It's been as reliable as a Greenwich time signal at times that. There he goes again. It's a long time since Gooden has been asked to cope with a jab like that coming at him. If you look at his uh, opponents over that, you yeah, and he's Come down. On. He clubbed him with the right hand and he's, he won't go down, Bugner. At that point, he didn't even put the knees on the canvas. He tried to absorb the punches and that was a pretty brave effort of his, perhaps foolish. And he's getting seven, eight, nine. And he's going to let him box on, and he's pinned in Bruno's corner, and it won't go surely now. The towel has come in from the Australian's corner, and Butler doesn't know why at that point, and he's, at least he's had the professional's pride, Jim, of staying on his feet. That I handed to him. He took a lot of stick there, and I don't know whether it was his wife who made the cornermen do it, or they did it under their own steam. Probably they did. They threw the towel in, the referee stopped it at that point anyway. Yeah, well, a good performance, a good effort from Bruckner, but let's talk about the man who's just really impressed everybody. Big Frank Bruno has finally come of age. A real professional performance from the first punch to the last punch. Big Frank did everything right, he did nothing wrong. And a long last Britain as a heavyweight we can be proud of and we can, OK, we're not going to talk about beating Tyson, but at least we can be proud and put him in there and let him have his chance. really gets in there and cuddles you. He first went down about 2 minutes 40 
of the eighth round there, Bugner. He, he might have hung on a bit and try and survive, but there was compassion from the corner. And Bruno's really enjoying this, waving to the crowd, who have really supported him magnificently here. Gentlemen, please! At the end of the eighth round, the referee has stopped the contest. Bugner was in no position to defend himself. Bruno was the winner. So officially the referee did stop it. He didn't have to accept a retirement. In fact, they're not supposed to accept the retirement from the towel because, well, anybody could throw a towel in. That has always been the danger. The best performance of his career, Jim, of what you were saying early. Without a doubt, Rage, we have to remember, coming into the ring tonight, Big Frank had all the pressure in the world on his shoulders. We saw him under similar circumstances with Glenn Fisher Smith and Tim Willis and he wasn't able to cope with it. But tonight he came in under all that pressure and straight from the off, he started. Bugner started well, but Frank was never intimidated. He got on with the job. It was a good, steady, grinding down performance. And it's nice to see this happening in boxing. We don't see this in too many other sports, Rage, do we? No, there you are. You see, old Joe mouthed a lot of words there, but he, he fought with a lot of spirit. It's nice to see him doing it. So here's Jim Rosenthal with Frank Bruno. Frank Bruno, many congratulations, first of all, Frank. How much did that victory mean to you? Um, it was a part of my life, and I couldn't have walked the streets tonight if Joe would have beat me. He's a very good, experienced guy. A lot of people knew he was experienced. They knew it was a good fight. A lot of people thought he was going to beat me tonight. But I thank God, I thank my manager, Terry Lawless. I thank George Francis, Frank Black. Right. I thank everybody, especially Barry Holmes, for giving me the opportunity and thank Joe Bugner. Frank, how much pressure on there was you uh, was there tonight to actually knock him out, to actually stop him as opposed to put, beating him? Put the, um, the camera in all the crowd. There's, all of England was on, on my back and I had to knock him out and I did knock him out. And this is all um, for people, a Christmas present for everybody. Just tell us about your view of how the fight finished. Um, well, it's difficult to say. Hey, just be coming yeah. up here with a bit of luck, Frank. Where's Harry anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen him anywhere. Yeah. Right, here we go. Yeah. And you had him really going yeah. in this round, didn't you? I was a bit anxious because I know he could take a good punch. He'd never been stopped before. O only once in his professional career. He was, but, he was nearly down there, but you kept on going. Oh, no, that's the name of the game, you know, Harry. Oh, no, it's, it's Jim. <laughs> Jim. And then I think out of your out of your sight, the towel fluttered in behind the behind there. The towel, come in? We, yeah. the, the towel yeah. did come in. Right. Did that surprise you at all? It did surprise me. I thought the round was over because I heard the bell and I thought Terry goes well done. And I, he was saying well done, well done, well done. I thought there was another round to go. Right. But don't let me take nothing away from Joe. Joe's a very experienced guy. Very, he's been around with the best. So you can't really knock this this opponent. You know, he's never been knocked down. Terry Marsh is supposed to be jumping off the river. I'm going to push him off. Yes, he said, yeah. that, he said that Joe Bugner was going to beat you. Yeah, but Jim Watt tonight said that this was probably the best he'd ever seen you. Oh, thank that, that you your Watt. most professional performance. Aye, Jimmy. Aye, Jimmy. Aye. Would you go along with that? I'm not too sure. I just thank God that I won, you know? It's, I'm so excited that I don't know how to put it into words. I won. You're not doing bad. I beat Joe Bugner. He and pulled it perfectly. You, you know what I mean? I just, I'm just glad I won. I don't Gentlemen, know how to put it into words. I like to thank the crowd all over Bugner. here, you know what I mean, for coming to support me. And ITV for buying the fight. And I'm sorry Harry couldn't be here. Yeah, well, we haven't missed him too much because Reg did OK anyway. Now, listen, next year, is it going to be... Is it going to be Mike Tyson I'm for you next sure. year? I'm not sure. You've got to um, ask Terry Lawless, Mickey Duff, all them sort of questions. But you would have I'm no willing. apprehension about it? I'm willing, because Joe Bugner is a very experienced, 18 stone strong campaigner, and a lot of people betted against me. So you ask the critics out there. I know Mike Tyson is a very tough guy, but I'm going to go in there and do my best like I tried my best tonight. And thank you, everybody, for watching me. Love you all. Thanks a lot, Frank. Thank you very much. So the final applause then for Bruno, and uh, let's face it, he has deserved it, and he's won it in style, and he's got to be the happiest man around, isn't he? Well, we've just heard from Frank Bruno, now we can hear from Joe Bugner, he is with Jim Rosenthal outside his dressing room. Joe Bugner, a brave performance, beaten tonight, and the end of an era from your point of view. Yes, um, I must say that Frank Bruno has done a very good job tonight. I, I give him all the credit because uh, he, he he done the job professionally. I'm sorry that it ended the way it did because I did come over to England to win and I wanted to stick it to the Fleet Street gang, but uh, it didn't happen, so they're going to stick it to me tomorrow. But 
I'm, I'm, I'm proud of Frank Bruno because he did the job fantastic. And after over 500 rounds, the Peter Pan time has ended and you're deciding to call it a day. Why is that? Absolutely. Well, I think, I think boxing's going to miss me tremendously. I really do think so. Even though with this tremendous turnout tonight, uh, I think the fans will miss me tremendously because I think they always need a bad guy in the gang and uh, I was it. But they'll have to find another one. Maybe Frank can be the bad guy for a while. Just one point. Were you angry when that towel fluttered in? Would you have been prepared to go on? Well, I was, I was a little bit angry, but not so much with, the, with my cornerman. I was angry with the referee for not, not stepping in in time. To, I mean, let's face it, I'm a, I, I was hit with a good punch, and I was sitting on the bottom rope, and I would have thought the referee would have had enough brain. I, told him, I thought he was a good referee, but believe me, he was not. I mean, for him to bloody well, you know, uh, let Bruno punch me on the bottom rope was terrible. OK, look, Frank did the job, and I'm very proud of Frank. Just one final question for you. Is Frank Bruno good enough to win the World Heavyweight title? Um, please don't ask me that question. Ask Frank. He, I mean, you know, he did a very good job tonight, but I think Mike Tyson a different kettle of fish, and, he's, and Mike Tyson's not 37, he's 21. Joe, thanks for talking to us. I think we'll miss you. Thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure working for boxing. Joe. Uh, Joe.